UFC 277 is this weekend. I want to go through the main card because there actually is quite a few fights on this card that are very intriguing and it is going to set up bigger fights in the future depending on what happens with them. So I want to get into it. I'm going to start on the main card here. This is going to be the full main card picks that I have going this weekend. Now, I get a chance to redeem myself because the UFC was out of the United States. We all know how I do prediction wise when the UFC is out of the United States. So this weekend it's in Dallas, Texas. I get a chance to redeem myself. So I am hoping that it goes well for me this weekend. So let's get into the first fight on the main card. We have Magomed Ankliev versus Anthony Smith, light heavyweight affair. I am going to go with Magomed Ankliev. This is a three round fight. I like his chances in that matter. Uh, if it was a five round fight, I would slightly go with Anthony Smith, but since it is a three round fight, I'm going to go ahead and pick Magomed Ankliev. I think he gets it done winning two rounds to one against Anthony Smith. I think he has enough weapons and overall experience to get it done against a guy like Anthony Smith, even though Anthony Smith has been fighting a little bit better lately. I just feel as though Magomed Ankliev, he has the grappling, has very long strikes, has a lot of things to get this fight done. So I think I'm going to go with him to win by a decision. Moving up the card, we have a flyweight affair, Alexandra Pantoja versus Alex Perez. I am going to go with Pantoja by a submission in the second round. I think he's going to get a triangle choke in the second round. I, I can see a mounted triangle finish happening in the second round. I think this fight is going to be absolute fireworks. I think both men are going to want to get started very early in this fight. And with that being said, I just think uh, Pantoja has the skills to go ahead and get it done. Also, Alex Perez coming off of a very long layoff. I mean, his last fight was in 2020. So this is going to be a long layoff coming back for him. He's going to be very slow to get started. Um, he's probably going to be very cautious. And I just feel like Pantoja is just going to go ahead and get the finish. Um, and it's going to be a submission. I think it's going to be a triangle, mounted triangle. And he's going to get the win there. Second round submission. Pantoja gets the win. Moving up, moving up the card, we have a heavyweight fight. Now, this fight, I could promise you, if you're going to make a bet on anything, if you're going to make a bet on anything in this card, this is the fight that you make a bet on, okay? Derek Lewis versus Sergey Pavlovich. Heavyweight fight. You bet that this fight does not go the distance. I promise you, I don't think this fight is going the distance at all, okay? Derek Lewis, he has not been doing very well lately, um, especially in his hometown, okay? He is in Texas. This fight is in Dallas, Texas. His hometown is Houston, Texas. But even when he was in his hometown against, you know, Cyril Gaon and against others, he did not perform. He did not live up to the hype, and uh, I don't think that he's going to want to make it a third time around, but he is up against a very tough challenger. Ser Sergei Pavlovich, very tough opponent, hits very hard. Now, they say he has an 84-inch reach. Now, from what I can see, it looks like he doesn't have an 84-inch reach, but whoever was taking his reach measurements in the UFC... I don't know what they were measuring by, but this guy looks like he has short arms and a big torso. He looks like Kelvin Gastelum at heavyweight, which is, it's funny to me. So I don't know how he got the 84 inch reach, but apparently he has an 84 inch reach. I'm going to believe the UFC, whatever. That's a long reach advantage for Derek Lewis to come up to. I mean, Derek Lewis has a 78, 79 inch reach. Maybe you can extend that to an 80 inch reach, but he's given a four inches of reach at heavyweight. That's a big deal. And again, Sergey Pavlovich here is very quick and nimble on his feet for heavyweight. Okay. 
The guy has a very good snap jab that he lands at heavyweight. His jabs are quick and they land, which is important, okay? Cyril Gaon fights very similar, not in terms of uh, Pavlovich. I don't think they fight similar at all. I'm saying in terms of utilizing their jab, they're very good at getting it to land and being very efficient with that. And I think that's going to do well for him in this fight. On top of that, he has this like looping right hand that he lands and he lands with like devastating power. I mean, the guy has really good power, especially with the ability to use different tactics on the feet and mix it up. He gets a lot of people nervous and he, he gets people's respect. I mean, because they know that he can really put them out at any second. So um, this is gonna be a very interesting fight. I think this fight does not end in the first round. I think a lot of people are picking this fight to end in the first. I don't think that's gonna happen. Derek Lewis desperately needs a win here. And I don't think that he's gonna go out there and be stupid and be reckless. Um, I think Sergei Pavlovich is gonna respect the power of Derek Lewis. And I don't think he's gonna come out there reckless. I think this goes into the second and third round. I actually will say it won't go the distance, but I will say that it goes into second and third rounds. I possibly believe that to be the case. And over that amount of time, I think Sergei Pavlovich is definitely going to land enough shots, land enough jabs to break down the, the guard of Derek Lewis. I don't see Derek Lewis taking down Sergei Pavlovich, and if he does... That's really the only way I see him winning is by like ground and pound or if he gets Pavlovich down, maybe because Pavlovich is pretty bad on his back. Like he doesn't, he doesn't shrimp. He doesn't get to a shoulder. He doesn't, you know, technical stand up at all. He just lays flat on his back, which is like the worst thing you can see from a heavyweight. He has no uh, ground control from the bottom. Like he's not very good at controlling his opponent from the bottom controlling posture on the bottom he is not good at that at all recovery from the bottom not good at all so if Derek Lewis wants to win this fight he's got to take Pavlovich down he's got to get into like side control and he's just got to like bomb elbows bomb punches like he's got to go real hard in the paint on the ground if he wants to win this fight so I just don't think that that's going to happen I don't think Derek Lewis is going to come in this and grapple although I think he should I just don't think he will. I think he's going to try to knock Pavlovich out. And if that's the case, I don't know how that's going to go because Pavlovich, he's going to crack back. I think this is going to be a situation where whoever lands that first big blow to stun the other one uh, will cause some major damage. And uh, I think they're going to wind up getting a, getting a finish here. So overall, I'm going to go ahead and pick Sergei Pavlovich by knockout in the late second round. I think he finds an opening at Derek's guard. I think Derek Lewis, you know, misses up uh, on some sort of footwork issue. Uh, and he sees that, you know, that jab coming, he moves his head off to the, the left. And then Sergei Pavlovich recognizes this, ducks under, uh, you know, Lewis's jab, gets over the, the top with the right, the looping right hand. And I think he uh, wobbles Derek Lewis, and then I think Pavlovich just swarms him against the fence and just finishes him off in the second round. Moving up to the co-main event, we have Brandon Moreno versus Kai Carr of France. This fight, re-watching the first fight, actually. Obviously, this is the second fight between the two of them. Uh, the first fight was very interesting. I saw both gentlemen, I saw both fighters taking advantage of weaknesses uh, in the first fight. Now, Brandon Moreno took advantage of a lot of openings that Kai Kara France was giving him. Now, I think right now, Kai Kara France is a better fighter. I think he's a more efficient fighter. I think his footwork has gotten better. His head movement's gotten better. And his defensive mindset has gotten better over overall. Uh, Brandon Moreno, I think, is on a decline. Okay, and I don't say that like as in he's getting worse. I'm saying that like if you look at the last fight with him and you know Figgy, uh, look at look at what he was doing. I mean, look at what he was doing. That's the same tactic over and over again. The guy stands so heavy on that front leg, and against lighter, 
opponents against in in a light you know a lighter division like flyweight you cannot stand that heavy on that front leg if you do it's going to get chewed up and you're looking at that that uh that second davison figueredo fight right davison figueredo did not throw any leg kicks at all and wind up getting picked apart from the outside by moreno the third fight comes around, Figueredo starts blasting leg kicks, and all of a sudden, you start seeing him have major success, you know, wobbling Moreno, getting Moreno in, like, bad positions, right? That is the key to success. I was watching this first fight with Kai Kara France. He was, Brandon Moreno was standing so heavy on that front leg, I don't know why Kai Kara France did not blast leg kicks more often. I guess it's because of that reach advantage that Moreno has, but I think him and those boys at City Kickboxing are going to be slamming calf kicks in this fight. I really do believe that. I think they're going to be slamming calf kicks. I think they're going to be high guarding, um, and I think they're going to be pressuring. I really think that Kai Kara France is actually going to be the one pressuring Moreno. I think we're going to see Moreno on the back foot Instead of him always being heavy on the front foot, I do believe that Kai Car France is going to come forward with a little, little bit of blitz movement to get Moreno on his back foot to take away that high kick that he was landing so effectively in the first fight. And I think that right hand from Kai Car France comes in so fast. I mean, that thing comes in like a piston. And that is something that really disrupts a fighter's rhythm, momentum. And you saw that in the first fight. Brandon Moreno was looking like he was setting up finishes at certain moments. And then he all of a sudden stops because that right hand comes through the guard and it comes through so fast. I think he's going to be able to land that in this fight. On top of that, I think he's going to be able to blast calf kicks. And I think he'll have to in order to win this fight. And I just feel like Kai Kara France understands that he made a lot of mistakes in that first fight. I think he's gotten better since then. And I do believe that he's going to actually steal this fight against Brandon Moreno. And I do believe he's going to win this fight by a decision. Three rounds to two. I think he's going to be a little bit more patient. He's going to fight a little bit smarter. I think he's going to mix in a lot of attacks. And it's going to help him in this fight. I'm going to go with Kai Car France here. I know a lot of people are picking Brandon Moreno. I just don't. I just don't think that Kai Car France is going to make the same mistakes twice, especially those glaring openings in that first fight that he did not take advantage of. I mean, I know when he lo when he lost that fight, when the decision came in and Brandon Moreno got his his hand raised, I knew that he was kicking himself in that locker room because as you're rewatching the fight as a fighter, you have to be thinking like, "Wow, look at the leg kick. It was wide open. Why was my head in that angle? Why did I do and He's going to go back to that drawing board. And those boys at City Kickboxing, they're going to get him in prime shape. He's going to be in prime time form. And I think he's going to win this fight. I really do. So I'm going with Kai Car France by decision or TKO. That's what I could see happening. Moving up to the main event, we have Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes. This is the second fight. I've really dabbled, um, you know, going either way here. I, I just, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I feel like Amanda Nunes should get the win here. I really do because, you know, you look at that first round in their first fight. I mean, she had so many options on like how to win that fight. It was just about why she didn't execute, why she didn't pull the trigger when she had Juliana Pena hurt. She dropped her with a lay kick as the first attack. Literally dropped her with a leg kick on the first attack. Another person that stands very heavy on their front leg attacked the front leg, right? She did it. Knocked her off her feet. Then all of a sudden, they're getting into these exchanges back and forth, and Amanda Nunes drops her with a jab. Why in the world would you be laying on top of someone when you're dropping them on the feet? Makes absolutely no sense. But anyway... I'm not going to get into that last fight too much. However, I am leaning Amanda Nunes here. I really am because I think she does have a little bit more power in the early rounds. 
And I don't see this going five rounds. I really don't see this fight going five rounds. It's either going to be a submission by Juliana Pena, or it's going to be a knockout by Amanda Nunes. In that last fight, I have intelligence. I have knowledge that she did not train as much in that fight. There was something going on in that camp. However, I do believe that she realizes that she kind of got embarrassed on the world stage and she's going to come back. She's going to have a little bit more energy, more motivation. And I do believe that she is going to want her title back. She's going to want her title back. She's going to want that moment back. And this is the best way to do it is to avenge that loss. And I do believe that she just has the power. She has the explosiveness in that first and second round to literally KO Juliana Pena. I really do believe that. I don't believe that Juliana Pena has that pop in the first two rounds to just knock out Amanda Nunes. Why do I know that? Is because it would have happened. It would have happened in those first two rounds to just knock her straight out. She was tagging her on the feet. It's because Amanda Nunes had no defense. She literally had no defense, no footwork. Her head was standing on the center line the entire time. Wasn't countering at all. This is unlike Amanda Nunes. I am not going to pick Juliana Pena here. I'm going to go ahead and pick Amanda Nunes. I know Juliana Pena has been training hard and she's been, you know, doing a lot of good things. But I do believe that Amanda Nunes is going to come back. She's going to win this fight. She's going to slam leg kicks after the first round when, you know, Pena is feeling the amount of leg kicks and a lot of the jabs to the nose that Amanda is going to land. She's going to land a couple right hands. I think Amanda is going to try to start working the body of Pena early. I think Pena, after a while, she's going to start feeling those shots. She's going to start to shoot for takedowns against the fence. And I think Amanda Nunes is going to be ready for that. She's going to land a nice elbow in the clinch. She's going to hurt Pena. It's going to, you know, back her off. She's going to start landing front kicks to the body. And I do believe that she's going to get a finish on the feet here. I think, I think a second round TKO Amanda Nunes, that's what I see happening. That's what I could see being the case um, in this fight. It's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough fight overall because, you know, you never know. Juliana Pena can swing a momentum shift. Juliana Pena can really shift the momentum of a fight. And you saw that in that last fight. So it's going to be a real tough one. I've, I've went back and forth on this, but I really do believe that Amanda Nunes, she has enough power to get this done early. And if she doesn't get it done early, she's probably screwed in the rest of the fight. But anyway, that's what I have to say about it. I'm going to go ahead and pick Amanda Nunes by TKO in the second round. Second to third round, I could see that happening. So those are my picks for UFC 277. Let me know who you guys are picking and who you guys you know, think will win down in the comments below. Also, if you guys are new to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I upload every week on combat sports, current events, news commentary, all that good stuff. And be sure to leave a like. It really helps the channel get out into the algorithm. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.